Everybody's playing their own game out here. The story of a coaching legend. Bobby Knight and his Hoosiers on the verge of getting back into the Big Ten race. Let's go out there and win it. Love for the results he got. What the hell are you scared of? And resented for the way he got them. Get your chance, Bobby Knight's been ejected. Get your head in the game or sit down. Brian Dennehy is Bobby Knight. Play my game is what got you here. A season on the brink. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and um, a season on the brink based on the wonderful best-selling book and a book that was a million times better than the movie, in my opinion, uh, by John Feinstein. And John Feinstein, New York Times best-selling author. You've read him, you've seen him, you hear him, you watch him. Here he is. Welcome aboard, my friend. It's good to talk to you again. Steve, it's great to talk to you again. It's been a while and Hard to believe it's been uh, 29 years since Season on the Brink came out. Of course, I was 12 when I wrote that book. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, that it tw the fact that it's 29 years, which I, you know, you just floored me with that because I wasn't even thinking. That is incredible. That is amazing. All right, uh, let, let, let's talk about um, the, the latest book, and then we'll get to some other issues. Uh, the latest book I should mention uh, is The Sixth Man. It's a follow-up to uh, the first in this, uh, what I guess is going to be a three-part series at least. Uh, it's uh, for the first book was the walk on uh, but the sixth man is the one that's out now the main character is still Alex Myers um, and congratulations on it it's a, it's it's geared towards that teenagers young young yeah. mid mid yeah. mid kids right right sort of uh, middle grade and up uh, Steve uh, the books it's been interesting because this is my ninth kids mystery and obviously they are geared for kids but a lot of adults seem to like to read them maybe because they're fairly easy to read if you're an adult, but they've been a lot of fun to do because they've involved my own kids who have helped me along the way trying to make the characters sound like kids in the 21st century, since clearly I was never a kid in the 21st century. <laughs> Join the club. Uh, all right, so let me, let me ask you, um, in, in this book, um, a, a character comes on who's kind of the, becomes the star of the basketball team, high school basketball team, and, and the character comes out as gay. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I, I got to admit, I haven't read the book, okay? I haven't read the book, but I've, I've heard you talk about it. And I, I just wonder, you, you said something to NPR the other day that uh, you're not trying to be preachy, uh, but you wanted to, to separate right from wrong. Mm -hmm. How is one's version of right from wrong and, you know, not being, in other words, if you believe you're right and there's only one right and one wrong on this kind of an issue, how, how can you avoid being, quote unquote, preachy? Well, I think the po point I'm making is if you read the book, and, and obviously you haven't, but I don't try to pass judgment on whether it's good to be gay or bad to be gay. It's simply a fact of life that many people in our society are gay. The same way there are many people in our society who are African American, there are many people in our society who are, who are Muslim, there are many people in our society who are Christian, many who are Jewish. I'm not passing judgment on that. What I am doing is, and you know this, Steve, because you were, you were in sports for a long time, is trying to say that the last bastion where it's been sort of okay to gay bash, and I know this from my experience as an athlete myself and having covered sports for so many years, has been sports. And we have made a lot of progress in that area where Jason Collins has come out and was largely accepted. Michael Sam came out and was largely accepted. And what I'm saying is that I know from my own kids' experiences that there are now GLAD groups in most high schools and in some in middle school. And that's good. That's progress. That kids are now being told you can be yourself and it's okay to be yourself. That's what I'm saying is right, Steve. Okay, I, and, right I, and, I don't think, and, I, and I don't have an argument with that, and certainly right. there's nothing wrong in any sense, that, and I'm not implying it with being gay, right. uh, and those, those groups, they're in my kids' high school as well. Yes, they are. Uh, but but we, we're, we're in a situation in this country where a lot of people believe their, their religious liberties are, are being mm -hmm. threatened uh, because if they object to baking a cake, renting out a hall, um, you know, providing a certain or service, religious service, to a, a gay couple, uh, they're going to jail, they're losing their businesses, and a lot of people believe that this is against, you know, freedom of religion. So I'm just saying this is a very touchy mm -hmm. topic where it, it just seems to me that a conservative book of this kind couldn't come out kind of, kind of stressing religious liberty, kind of defending a player's right to object in the locker room, not, vi well, not, think not harass like and not be violent, out, but, but object respectively. It, right. You know what it says to me, John? It's like this double standard. It's like, it's like 
Uh, Rush Limbaugh, you know, got kicked off the air almost immediately. Can't buy a football team. Can't be involved in a consortium to buy a football team. Bob Costas could talk about guns. Bob Costas could talk about anything he wants on a liberal uh, platform. Um, you, you have people like Mike Lupica, big liberal when it comes to politics, writes front page of the Daily News until recently ESPN talk radio, sports. You could do sports if you're a liberal. You can't do sports if you're a conservative. Would you agree? No, I wouldn't agree. I think you can do sports if you're a liberal, and I think you can do sports if you're a conservative. If Bob Costas was as good as he has been for all these years uh, on television, and he had a conservative viewpoint on guns, two things would happen. A, he'd be allowed to talk about his position on guns, and B, a lot more people would probably agree with that position than would disagree with that position. Now, people objected when he talked about guns on, on, a, on a football game, but it was in light of a football player being involved in a gun-related incident. That, and that particular team was playing in the game that night. So I don't think it was wrong for Costas to bring up the well, issue. What about Kornheiser calling uh, the Republican uh, conservatives, uh, aligning them with ISIS? He didn't yeah, get suspended, I, but Kurt Schilling mm -hmm. got, got suspended for what he's tweeted out. We got 15 seconds. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I think that there are double standards throughout the world. And you're right in some cases, and you're wrong in other cases. And you're right, Kornheiser probably should have gotten the same treatment that Kurt Schilling got, Great. regardless of what side he was on. We'll agree to, we'll agree to end ESPN. on that. The sixth man is the book, John Feinstein. Happy Thanksgiving, sir. Steve, All right, we're coming back, folks. Don't go away.